Schwab's talking exactly. about doing Schwab's talking about consumer lending, but ask, right. ask Goldman how hard that is to do a startup consumer lending. Totally. Business. Yeah. It's been really hard. David, we're gonna leave it there. We should uh, point out that we are broadcasting the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio. Full disclaimer and advertiser here on Bloomberg. Matt Monks, deals editor at Bloomberg. David Ritter, payments and specialty finance analyst for BI. Thank you both so much. Great insights. A good way to frame this whole debate. You're listening to Bloomberg Radio. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. For the first time in five weeks, consumers are more upbeat. Bloomberg's weekly consumer comfort index is higher on better assessments of the economy, personal finances, and the buying climate. A separate monthly gauge of economic expectations is at a four-month high. PayPal is down about 1% after it said last night that it would pay $4 billion for the online coupon site Honey Science. Some analysts are questioning the deal's steep price. Blackstone is exiting the single-family rental home market, selling its remaining stake in Invitation Homes. Presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren has criticized Blackstone's buying of homes and converting them to rentals in the aftermath of the financial crisis. Mixed signals on trade are keeping stocks in a narrow range. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 13. The S&P 500 is down 2 points. The Nasdaq Composite is down 15. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school. But I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. What if you could keep the top economic experts in a conference room next to your office without having to feed them? Do we need better optics? Do we need some substance? Do CEOs care about ESG? We have seen quite a lot of stimulus pumped into the system already. It's the biggest warning yet about the financial risks of climate change. Now, there are more ways to hear us. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com and iHeartRadio apps, and at BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. If you're planning on driving this weekend, expect delays on the A406 North Circular Road. There'll be road closures between Tottenham and Edmonton from 10pm on Friday the 22nd of November to 5am on Monday the 25th of November, while we carry out essential maintenance and repairs. All roads in the surrounding area will be extremely busy, so please allow more time for your journey and expect delays in the area. Plan ahead and check alternative routes at tfl.gov.uk. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. It's hard to enjoy your daily yoga routine when your mind is on your next VAT return and how to avoid the usual mistakes. But with QuickBooks, the new VAT smart scan technology does the work for you. As the deadline approaches, it checks for duplicates, looks for anomalies and reviews VAT codes. So your biggest struggle is touching your forehead with your ankle. Search for QuickBooks. Perfect for making tax digital. QuickBooks. Backing you. Stuck in traffic during the big game? With TuneIn Premium, you can listen to your favorite NFL team on the go. No TV required. Even during rush hour, you won't miss a single touchdown. Listen to the NFL on TuneIn Premium today. Touchback right into the end zone. Touchdown. NFL fans, hear every live game on TuneIn Premium. He runs inside. He's got a 10, 5, touchdown. Today, hear the home and away call as the Indianapolis Colts visit the Houston Texans at 8.20 p.m. Eastern. Firing, caught, ten, five, touchdown! At home or on the go, hear the home and away call of every NFL game this season on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. From ESPN and the award-winning producers of The Sterling Affairs comes the latest season of 30 for 30 podcasts. Four brand new stories of espionage. He wanted this team to be the Barcelona of women's basketball. Resilience. I started to scream. I tried to get away. Corruption. It's the culture of win at all costs. And rebirth. How will we ever rebuild it? 30 for 30 podcasts, season six. Listen in favorite 30 for 30 podcasts on TuneIn. On the goal line. Hockey fans, the 2019-20 NHL season is here. Here's Petrangelo, he scores! 
hear the action live on TuneIn Premium. From regular season action to the All-Star game and through the Stanley Cup in June. Hear the home and away call for every game for every team live. At home or on the go, never miss a game with the NHL on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. Introducing a new podcast, ESPN Daily. When you want to go beyond your feed, when you want to get inside the score, when you want to get behind the highlight, there's ESPN Daily. Go deeper into the stories of the moment. Get the exclusive access and insider perspective that only ESPN can give you. ESPN Daily, hosted by me, Mina Kimes. Listen now to ESPN Daily on TuneIn. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130 to Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991 to Boston. Bloomberg 1061 to San Francisco. Bloomberg 960 to the country. Sirius XM Channel 119 and around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Well, as often these things are, Carol, it's complicated when it comes to plant-based diets, healthier eating. Uh, We're going to check in with some of our friends down at Johns Hopkins for our weekly segment on health and wellness and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, some looking, nuance. Uh, absolutely. I'm looking, it's not just about individuals, but it's also uh, has an impact on economy. So we'll get into that in just a moment. Right now though, let's check in on your top business stories and a look at the trading day. Here is uh, Charlie Pellet. Thank you very much, Carol Master. Looking at a loss right now for the S&P 500 index. Little change. That's the bottom line. Been that way for much of the session with the S&P down now by less than a point. 3107, the Dow also little change down six points down less than one-tenth of one percent. NASDAQ slumping nine points, down about one-tenth of one percent. Traders are weighing conflicting signals about the outlook for a trade deal between Beijing and Washington. The 10-year down 9.30 seconds, yield now 1.77 percent. Gold is down five-tenths of one percent, 14.63 the ounce. And West Texas Intermediate Crude up 2.8 percent, 58.59 a barrel. 3M CEO Mike Roman says uh, U.S.-China trade tension has not led to a shift in supply chains for 3M's customers in China, though demand in some key areas has been weaker this year. Roman was interviewed in Beijing at the Bloomberg New Economy Forum. Many economists even ask us, what are you seeing? Do you see anything changing? And as we've come through the second half of 2019, it's been pretty steady. As we came out of our earnings call in Q3, we we told everybody, we see Q4 much like Q3. We haven't seen the inflection up yet. There's hope and optimism that things will get better, but we haven't seen that yet in the marketplace. And 3M shares trading lower now by five-tenths of 1%. Schwab, Charles Schwab, nearing a deal to buy rival TD Ameritrade Holding, uniting two of the biggest retail brokerages in a time of brutal industry price competition, a topic we were just discussing here on Bloomberg Business Week. Schwab shares, they're up 6.9%. TD Ameritrade surging 18.5%. Again, recapping, S&P 500 index down now by half a point. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Charlie you got a call. Uh, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's uh, Mr. Schwab calling. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Chuck being like, what do you think about this deal, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, just saying. You're I'm listening. No, <laughs> no You're don't good. be. You're great. We've done much worse than that, Charlie. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week. <laughs> this week, we begin a new weekly series exploring issues in the world of health and medicine. And this week, we're going to talk about a topic I was actually just talking about it, Jason, with my brother-in-law about plant-based diets. Uh, Doing some research into this is Dr. Martin Bloom. He's director of Johns Hopkins Center for a Livable Future at the Bloomberg School of Public Health on the phone from Baltimore. The Bloomberg School of Public Health, by the way, supported by Michael Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies. Dr. Uh, Bloom, so nice to have you with us. I do feel like the world is increasingly talking about... um, um, a plant-based world. Tell us a little bit about the the work that you've been doing. Oh, thanks, uh, Carol. Yeah, well, you know, we just uh, published a paper uh, looking into uh, several diets, actually ten different diets, and the impact on uh, climate change as well as looking at uh, the fresh water use of 140 countries. And uh, but, but you know, let me let me step back uh, a bit about uh, before I will explain you the results because. You know, we we have to realize that economic growth in low-middle-income countries is absolutely essential 
for ending poverty and, you know, why you think this is important. You know, it is extremely important you look at migration, you look at uh, many of the climate disasters in Africa and in Asia. It, it is very critical that, we, that, that, in fact, we focus also on the economic growth of low- and middle-income countries. But the World Bank has recognized that, in fact, one of the major obstacles of, in fact, economic growth is, in fact, undernutrition. And particularly the form of undernutrition, which happens in the first 1,000 days. And you would say, you know, why? But actually, what happens in the first 1,000 days is that the brain of all these children are developing. And then these children don't have the right nutrients and the right healthy food. And in fact, that has such a dramatic impact that maybe you, you can see like a 10 IQ point difference at population level. So you can imagine what the consequences are for, in fact, the economy of these uh, lower and middle income countries, as well as thinking about the impact, what we call the long range impact of these uh, malnutrition on obesity and chronic diseases in those places. So against this background, you have to think about you know, what's happening with climate change now? And climate change, of course, is will influenced by agriculture. Not many people know that. Most of the people realize that the energy sector is really important, but, you know, about 25% of the greenhouse gas emissions are actually caused by agriculture. Hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we focus more and more on plant, I would say plant, uh, you know, based or plant-forward diets. I think that's why it's so critical. And so, Dr. Bloom, as you've pointed out, like it's complicated uh, here. And so where do we need to be focusing our efforts to make sure that that nuance is captured? Because I feel like we talk about this in a very macro uh, sense, but it feels like maybe we need to be thinking a little more micro here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So what is really interesting is that the, the results of our paper were actually confirming many of the other papers which have been published over the past uh, two years or so. That in fact, in the U.S. and in, 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 in Canada and Europe, uh, Latin America, we definitely have to move to a more plant-forward diet. I mean, that's clear. You know, it's great for our health because we will have a reduction in, in in chronic diseases as well as, for example, obesity levels. But at the same time, it's good for the climate. Situation is a little bit different in low and middle-income countries because of the current production as well as the trade in those countries. It's not enough that these countries can provide. Uh, their population with an option of, of healthy diets, you know, besides, of course, the upper class, but not, in fact, the majority of the people. And that's why if they will actually move forward in the direction, they will increase their greenhouse gas emission as well as, uh, I would say, the, uh, also the fresh water use. And we talk about 2 billion people. You know, 2 billion people live about in those, uh, in those countries. And that's quite still dramatic. So, but, the, but you can actually do a lot uh, in the in the rest of the world to actually you know mm-hmm. to actually compensate for that increase in, in greenhouse gases in those poor countries. Well, and I think you know your summation, uh, just looking at some of the research you shared with us, is that the whole idea of we need to think about the supply chains, we need to think about the food systems. You know, I think about in our world, I've you know I've mentioned this often on our air about Chipotle trying to figure out you know, different ways of mass food production that's better better for the environment and better for for the individuals. Dr. Bloom, really enjoyed our time with you. Thank you so much. He's director of Johns Hopkins Center for a Livable Future at the Bloomberg uh, School of Public Health, as we mentioned. Uh, That school is supported by Michael Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies, joining us on the phone from Baltimore. Coming up, we're going to talk a little luxury. Well, actually, we're going to listen to a little luxury. I get to listen to your uh, part of your fine interview that you conducted upstairs at the year ahead. We got a little bit of a sneak peek as, as it was going live. Lively, to say the least. Timely, uh, to say more than the least. Uh, really uh, good stuff. There's a lot of deal flow, and that includes Tiffany uh, in the crosshairs of LVMH. So we'll get into that in just a moment. First up, though, back to uh, World and National News headlines. And for that, we head to Martin DeCaro. He's in our 991 newsroom in Washington, D.C. Hi, Martin. Thank you, Carol. Republicans are using their turn at the House impeachment hearing to challenge the witnesses' credibility and what they remember about the emissaries President Trump dispatched to deal with Ukraine. Bloomberg's Irv Chapman reports live from Capitol Hill. Martin, David Holmes, who overheard a phone call between Ambassador Gordon Sondland and President Trump, said the salty language was not what was central to the call. The main takeaway from the call was the president doesn't care about Ukraine. So we're going to have a tough road ahead. 
to convince him to schedule an Oval Office meeting for President Zelensky and to release this hold on security assistance. We were trying to find a formula, things we could do with Ukrainians that would convince the president that they were worth talking to. Republican Mike Turner said Holmes was brought in by the Democrats who are making themselves a laughing stock for trying to impeach the president because he didn't take a meeting, Martin. Thanks, Irv. And earlier, Fiona Hill, the former top Russia expert on the National Security Council, criticized Republicans for embracing what she called a fictional narrative about Ukraine. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he has no intention to resign, says he's the victim of a conspiracy of left-wing opponents and media figures. Netanyahu was indicted in three corruption cases, accused of bribery, fraud, and breach of trust for allegedly taking gifts from wealthy friends and manipulating Israel's media landscape to win favorable coverage. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Congress may not have enough time to pass the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade deal this year. Global news 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Martin DeCaro. Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms For the sixth straight time, we think it comes down to one thing, you. Because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation number one in professional development support, and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com slash award. Startups and research universities like New Jersey Institute of Technology are fueling the innovation economy. And few people are better positioned to see what's on the horizon in New Jersey than physicist and state representative Andrew Zwicker. How technology is transforming our financial sector is revolutionary. And so much of that is in New Jersey. We are innovators when it comes to agriculture. And there is opportunity now for great transformation in how are we going to grow food in an ever-growing population. And how do we turn urban centers into agricultural centers? Autonomous vehicles is another one where we have some of the world's leading experts and how this will transform how those who are either elderly or are visually impaired or mobily impaired can start to use autonomous vehicles to transform their lives and have access to transportation they could have never had before. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu slash research. EasyJet fly to a wide range of ski destinations from London. So whether you want to go all out on a classic Alps experience or fancy something a little more low-key, it's smoother than ever and you'll be there, well, you'll be there before you know it. Book now at easyjet.com. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like for reals. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. This is not a commercial. This is a reminder. With TuneIn Premium, you could be listening to more music commercial-free. Get over 45 commercial-free music stations. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. Hey, NFL fan, can't watch the game? Can't be there? We've got you covered. With TuneIn Premium, you can listen to every NFL game live as it's happening. Sean McCoy has an opening on the right side, punches into the end zone for the touchdown. Or catch it later on demand. Offset backs behind Mahomes. The give is to Williams. Starts right, cuts it back to the left, and blows into the end zone for the touchdown. You call the plays. Follow the NFL anytime, anywhere, all season long with TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. Introducing a new podcast, ESPN Daily. When you want to go beyond your feed, when you want to get inside the score, when you want to get behind the highlight, 
There's ESPN Daily. Go deeper into the stories of the moment. Get the exclusive access and insider perspective that only ESPN can give you. ESPN Daily, hosted by me, Mina Kimes. Listen now to ESPN Daily on TuneIn. We can't make traffic move faster during rush hour. But we can help you catch up on the news with TuneIn with live around-the-clock news from MSNBC. In the U.K., they're significantly worse. When the president gets up to the podium... CNBC and Fox News Talk. The Fox News poll sizing up the race for 2020 found that each of the five top... You can use your stop and go for good by staying in touch with the world. Search news to hear what's happening now. From ESPN and the award-winning producers of The Sterling Affairs comes the latest season of 30 for 30 podcasts. Four brand new stories of espionage. He wanted this team to be the Barcelona of women's basketball. Resilience. I started to scream. I tried to get away. Corruption. It's the culture of win at all costs. And rebirth. How will we ever rebuild it? 30 for 30 podcasts, season six. Listen and favorite 30 for 30 podcasts on TuneIn. To LeBron, slam! The NBA is on TuneIn Premium. Each week, TuneIn picks an NBA game you just can't miss. James Harden and the Houston Rockets are in L.A. to take on Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Harden pulls back, trying to make it 11-2. to two. Kawhi Leonard is all over the place. This Friday, the Houston Rockets are at the L.A. Clippers. Tip-off is at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Search NBA on TuneIn to follow your favorite NBA team today. You're listening to TuneIn, where you can hear all the audio you love in one place. Live NFL games, the hottest music, breaking news, and podcasts. Push play and go about your day, only on TuneIn. Breaking news, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. Stocks lower, little changed right now. We have got the S&P down by half a point at 3107. The Dow down seven points, also little change. NASDAQ is down eight, a drop there of one-tenth of one percent. Traders are weighing conflicting signals about the outlook for a trade deal between Beijing and Washington. Tenure down 9.30 seconds, yield now 1.77%. West Texas Intermediate uh, up 2.8%, 58.60 a barrel. Gold down 5 tenths of 1%, 1464 the ounce. I'm Charlie Pellets, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. So, Jason, I mentioned lots of deal flow, and that includes today LVMH and Tiffany entering talks uh, after LVMH boosted its offer for the U.S. jeweler in an effort to clinch the biggest acquisition ever in the luxury goods industry, this is according to people in the know. So, I caught up with the Tiffany CEO, Alessandra Boliolo, at the Year Ahead Luxury event here at Bloomberg. And we began by talking, of course, about a possible deal. All right, so let's do the elephant in the living room. So everybody's been reporting about LVMH. It's been in the news for a couple of weeks, even late last night. Sure. Um, it sounds like you guys are finally officially talking. Is that fair? Well, you know, the... Um, I know, this is tough. We have, uh, <laughs> no, no, we, you know, we have a strategy. And, yeah. Uh, we have six key strategic priorities, and the first one is to amplify our brand message. Now, by amplifying our brand message, I was not meaning to talk about m a in a conference, so maybe I can spend on other points if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I will, and, I, and I'm not going to push too much because I know there's a lot of stuff going on. But I do wonder about, when we look at the luxury space, is there something to be had by being part of a bigger conglomerate like LVMH. And I'm curious, you've been at the company now for two years, right? Yes. And you've been rebooting stores, reworking a strategy, introducing lots of lines. Is M&A, as a deal, kind of part of the plan? Well, I have to say that there are many luxury brands, but when you you take really top luxury brands, the, the big, let me say, mega brands, we talk about a handful of brands. And uh, among those, you have uh, actually some of them extremely successful that right. are part of big groups. Consider Vuitton, consider Cartier. But you have uh, other brands that are super brands, super powerful, that are not part of, uh, of big groups. Consider Chanel, consider Hermes. So honestly, I, uh, I mean, seriously, I don't think that for uh, this kind of uh, level of brands, there is uh, 
a magic formula. It could be, it's proven, can be one way, can be the other. What is crucial is that when you lead a brand like ours that has 182 years of history, yeah. you, at the end of the day, have to concentrate on uh, the legacy that you receive and uh, the beautiful product and promises that you made to your customers. This is really the key of success. Then the financial arrangements, as I said, I mean, can be successful one or the other. What is important, customers, they don't care about your shareholders. Right. Customers share, care about your products, about your brand, about uh, sustainability, about the beauty of your uh, products. This is what really makes success. You know, it's interesting that you say that too, Alessandro. I think we're in a year where we are so much debating public private markets right and i think companies are evaluating the benefits and pro or the pros and cons of staying private versus not and i do wonder can i just indulge me for a second <laughs> a bloomberg opinion piece today and it said um one of our writers said a deal would benefit both sides for the owner of louis vuitton it would mean dominating the jewelry market i mean it would automatically give them a huge presence while tiffany could avoid the tricky task of executing a turnaround in a u.s recession on its own so i do wonder about being able to step away we're part of the problem we focus quarter to quarter to quarter so when you're doing renovations on stores when you're thinking about the future you you know, you get a report card every three months, and I think sometimes it makes it difficult for a publicly held company. Would there be some benefits from stepping away from that public spotlight? Well, for sure, for any public company to be Not reporting, uh, to be <laughs> reporting every quarter, there is, uh, of course, it's a, it's a check that you have to go through every quarter. <clears throat> And uh, we take it very, very seriously because yeah. it's our shareholders and it's our obligation to not only report but also deliver results to the benefit of our shareholders. Having said so, I think as uh, a leader of uh, a brand mm -hmm. with uh, such an history which means value, to maximize that value, I have uh, and my team, we have to look at the quarter but we have to look even more at the next three years, at the next five years. So this is, uh, if you want, the real challenge in managing a brand uh, with uh, a legacy like, uh, like Tiffany. Right. Because uh, you have, uh, of course, uh, to maximize the profit for your shareholders, but this doesn't mean that it is uh, just the sum of uh, 10 good quarters. You have to think about uh, the next 10 years. All right, two more questions that I'm going to move off, off of what every, was on everybody's mind. Are you open to a deal? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm asking you for the okay. advent calendar. Have you seen that advent calendar? It no, starts at 112,000. We, we could have a deal if uh, all the advent calendars went didn't already sell. They are all sold out. Otherwise, I would... Uh, Wait, are you talking about the advent you, calendar or are you talking about a deal? You, I would offer you as a deal a, a beautiful advent calendar to avoid this question. Unfortunately, they are also that. <laughs> but if I open December 24th, would it say a deal? Yeah, you know, they didn't share with me what there is in December 24th, but I will tell you on December 25th. One last question. <laughs> that will promise? be my Christmas gift. Are you promise? I, I know where you live. Yeah. I know absolutely. where the store is. Absolutely. I will I tell you what you. there is in the, in the little box of uh, December 24th. One last question, otherwise my editors are going to just beat me up. Um, are there other parties? Are there other parties interested in the company? <laughs> we do a lot of parties at Tiffany. We have a breakfast at Tiffany, <laughs> lunch at Tiffany, dinner at Tiffany. We have parties. Two shows nightly. Minutes, try the uh, deal. Minutes. November, December, we have plenty of parties. <laughs> and you can get invited <laughs> if you behave. Are there bankers around? Are there, <laughs> forget it. My husband gave you up on that a long time miss, ago. You don't want to miss a party at okay. Tiffany, do so, you? So I promised one last question. <laughs> are there lots of bankers around? Is it crazy? Well, I never realized how many bankers there are in Manhattan. <laughs> and lawyers, too. Where's the PR person? You guys primed him so well. And nothing against bankers. I don't think that's Is there a deadline? Like, do you have a, like, New Year's holiday that you want to go on? So, like, you want to get things done, like a deal done before you go on your New Year's holiday? I want to do a deal uh, with, uh, with your husband because I think uh, he has to buy you a very beautiful DIF uh, diamond in a Tiffany setting because with such uh, a... Um, 
let me say, uh, <laughs> persistent uh, partner. I, I am think very persistent. He, I think he has to buy a beautiful diamond. All right, so that's Alessandro Boliolo, and he is the chief executive officer of Tiffany & Company, uh, joining us here at the Bloomberg Year Ahead uh, luxury event just uh, a couple of hours ago. And I have to say, good sport, because he could have easily, I mean, we talked to a lot of CEOs, and there are times when there's something going on in the news and people back out, and kudos. Yeah. I am so in awe of uh, him coming in, talking with us, and being a really good sport. And we talked about what they're doing in China, because uh, they're certainly a, that's a big, big market. Market for them. We talked about millennials. We talked about, uh, you know, they're uh, making changes to their store here in New York. So a lot going on. But kudos. And but I don't know whether or not what's going to happen. Right. Well, and we'll see. I mean, obviously, yeah. this deal could be a very interesting one. And you know, who knows? You may get invited to some parties. John may know. be buying you a new diamond. You got to make some room there, though. Uh, you've got some pretty serious hardware already. I'm just saying. Okay. Just, just saying. saying. Anyway, I think it's fascinating, and I think it plays to what we kicked off our show with. Just Companies are doing deals. Yeah. And bigger seems totally. to be better. Right. Well, and ways. luxury is a hot part of the market right now. Yes. Um, and we do see some pairing off. And we'll see if Tiffany is among them. And when it comes to diamonds, bigger is better. That's true. <laughs> there you go. Well, I had to go there. It was so obvious. That. Anyway, a real sport and love talking with the CEO of Tiffany. You are listening to Bloomberg Radio. At Asda this Christmas, treat them to a gift or two or three. With three for two on a wide range of beauty and toiletry gift sets. From Dove, Lynx, Bayliss and Harding and many more. Asda, let's make Christmas extra special. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. Individual prices, £1 to £20. Cheapest item free. From ESPN and the award-winning producers of The Sterling Affairs comes the latest season of 30 for 30 podcasts. Four brand new stories of espionage. He wanted this team to be the Barcelona of women's basketball. Resilience. I started to scream. I tried to get away. Corruption. It's the culture of win at all costs. And rebirth. How will we ever rebuild it? 30 for 30 Podcasts, Season 6. Listen in favorite 30 for 30 podcasts on TuneIn. Want to hear about the latest and greatest things to listen to on TuneIn? For reminders of the biggest live sports games, debates, and breaking news stories, follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay connected with the audio that matters to you. This is the TuneIn Newsreel with top news stories from today. Charles Schwab in talks to buy TD Ameritrade. Sources tell CNBC a deal could be announced as early as today. The combined companies would manage $5 trillion in assets. There are now three players that matter. It's only Fidelity, Schwab, uh, if this goes through, and Persian. And nobody else in brokerage matters. So I know interactive brokers, people love it. I know E-Trade, there are people who like it. I'm not saying they're not good at it. I'm saying they don't have the scale to be important, and they're not growing. Brett Holtz, CEO Josh Brown on CNBC. Netflix was out for about an hour today. According to DownDetector.com, Netflix says it's fixed everything. Macy's shares are lower on disappointing quarterly results. It's also cutting its outlook. Tesla's CEO Elon Musk has tweeted one word tonight. That's when Tesla unveils its new Cybertruck, an all-electric pickup truck. Hear breaking news as it happens with live around-the-clock coverage from CNBC on TuneIn. To LeBron, slam dunk! The NBA is on TuneIn Premium. Each week, TuneIn picks an NBA game you just can't miss. James Harden and the Houston Rockets are in L.A. to take on Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Harden pulls back, trying to make it 11 to 2. Kawhi Leonard is all over the place. This Friday, the Houston Rockets are at the L.A. Clippers. Tip off is at 8:30 p.m. Eastern. Search NBA on TuneIn to follow your favorite NBA team today. Financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. We move into the final hour of trading. We've got losses for the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ. Bottom line, little changed. S&P now down by one point at 3,107, a drop of about one-tenth of one percent. The Dow is down 14, also down less than one-tenth of one percent. NASDAQ is down eight points, a drop of one-tenth of one percent. Traders are weighing conflicting signals about the outlook for a trade deal between Beijing and Washington. 
it. The 10 year down 730 seconds, yield now 1.76%. Gold is down 5 tenths of 1%, 1464 the ounce. And West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil rallying 2.7%, 5855 a barrel. The Bloomberg New Economy Forum is underway in Beijing, and among the participants, David Solomon, the chairman and CEO of Goldman Sachs Group, and he spoke about the global economic backdrop. Everybody's looking for what's wrong. There are a lot of things that are going well. Are there issues? Sure. Is there uncertainty? Yes. Is the China-U.S. relationship and trade tension a headwind to growth? Yes. Do we need to make progress and find ways through it? Yes. But if you step back at a high level, things are going okay. The path to our streaming video future has a few bumps. Netflix customers were cut off from a service uh, from service temporarily today. Another high-profile disruption this month following glitches that marred Disney's launch of its highly anticipated Disney Plus service. Netflix shares are advancing now. They are up by 2.2%. Schwab said to be nearing a deal to buy rival. TD Ameritrade Holding, uniting uh, two of the biggest retail brokerages in a time of brutal industry price competition. Schwab shares there are up to uh, 7.3 percent. As for Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade advancing now by 19.7 percent. So it is a down day, little changed for the Dow, the S&P, and the Nasdaq Composite Index. S&P down a point now at 3107. The Dow down 13, down less than one tenth of one percent, and the Nasdaq. Composite index lower now by nine points, a drop there of one tenth of one percent. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. This is Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Mazur and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. All right, let's do a little Business Week economics now. Kathleen Hayes, Global Economics and Policy Editor for Bloomberg. She's on the phone here in New York City. And Yelena Shalecheva, she's in our studio, Senior U.S. Economist for Bloomberg Economics. Kathleen, I want to start with you. What's top of mind? What's happening in the bond market today? Well, as you can see, there's a little bit of a sell-off, uh, even though uh, stocks have been mixed and now turning a bit lower. And I think when you, to me, when you look across the economic landscape, we, we, landscape, landscape, Elena can jump in and flesh this out more for us. Uh, but numbers coming in, and a lot of them are fine. I just think that uh, when you look at the leading economic uh, index, leading e- uh, index of economic indicators fact that there's weakness there three months in a row. Uh, Fed speakers today, not too surprising. Neil Kashkari of Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, saying that uh, he doesn't see a recession, but risks are rising, particularly around trade. Another reason to say, hey, what's the Fed going to do at the end of the year? What are they going to do in 2020? Tell me how the trade deal is going to work out. Loretta Mester, uh, president of Cleveland Fed, however, saying that she was not in favor of three rate hikes. Uh, she thinks the Fed had done enough, has done enough. She's not worried about inflation expectations. I think, you know, Laura has been more hawkish, so you can definitely put her in that camp. Um, you know, we've got a, it. It's all about trade right now, isn't it? It does feel like that, and certainly that's coming up in repeated conversations over the new economy of uh, new economy forum, excuse me, in Beijing that Bloomberg Media is hosting. So, Mm -hmm. Yelena, I want to bring you in. What do you make of sort of how how much trade is or isn't weighing uh, kind of on investors' minds and economists' minds? I guess more importantly, I think it will stay with us for quite some time. So. to me, the recent developments on the trade front uh, look like they're just trying to push the can down the, the road. We're not going to get a significant uh, rollback uh, in tariffs. We're not going to get significant progress on the trade front either. That's how I feel. That's my um, um, you know expectation. I think that means that uncertainty weighing on business investment, business sentiment will stay with us going into 2020. So, um, so to me, yeah, there are a lot of developments, but I wouldn't call them real developments either. They, they just does a little bit more of the same to me. So, Kathleen, um, you know, I do wonder as we think about some of the big macroeconomic themes, here we are, you know, almost done with November and, you know, getting ready to kind of make our summaries of the year and start to look ahead to 2020. I mean, what are the things that you're keeping an eye on? Obviously, you're very focused with our programming in Asia as well. But what seem to be the key themes here? 
Well, certainly that the, the, the trade war has taken an enormous toll, certainly a significant toll on the U.S., Asian nations, uh, Germany, for example, you know, the biggest economy in Europe. If, if, if there's something that starts interfering with the flow of exports and imports, if it persists, uh, for a lot of countries, that's going to hit manufacturing. We've seen that. Fortunately, in many countries around the world, services have held up pretty well, right? Uh, we don't see the world just sliding down a dark tube. But the more this continues, the longer the dam damage potentially is. And what we've also seen, you know, central banks, for the most part, in very easy mode. So if things don't clear up pretty soon, sure, the Fed can cut again. Sure, the Reserve Bank of Australia can cut again and, ooh, you know, kicking and screaming, they can start buying bonds. It's something Pillow, who's the head of the bank, doesn't really want to do. But these tools, it seems, become less and less effective, which puts all the more onus, number one, on getting something resolved with this trade war, turning it into a deal. So we eliminate that. And I think, again, also, you know, the, the talk about fiscal stimulus and what can governments do is sometimes it just feels like, yeah, yeah, we've heard this a million times. We kind of hope that uh, some of these governments are listening. All right. So, Yelena, what is the thing that you're looking most forward to in terms of what we hear either data wise, Fed speaker wise? You know, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year here. Well, first of all, we're getting closer and closer to the turkey day. So uh, I think what's important to watch uh, next week. So let's not get to the end of the year yet. But, <laughs> All right, um, I'm getting ahead yeah, of myself. Just, Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Let's, let's take a look at... Uh, so we are looking at uh, GDP revisions next uh, week, and it's an important one, even though we're not, ex we're not expecting major revisions uh, for to the third quarter of GDP. But... Yet the numbers are really important in the sense that they will continue to show uh, significant dominance by consumers. We will see weakness in the business sector. And this will provide us the first read of corporate profits for the third quarter, which is like a significant fundamental for um, the health of the business sector going forward. So I think uh, that will be an important one to watch and also holiday sales. Yeah. So that's that's another one. Checking uh, on the consumer big time, right? Checking the pulse of the consumer because of how important it is. So, and going into the year end, I think uh, the next thing on the radar is payrolls and obviously the December uh, FOMC meeting. Hey, the conference board's LEI, um, leading economic indicators, down three straight months, worst streak since 2016. Um, are you worried about that, Yelena? Well, this is one of the inputs into our recession model. Okay. So currently it's not showing more than a 25% chance of a recession in the next uh, 12 months, but this is definitely something to watch uh, going forward. I, I'd say that uh, the leading indicators index is the most significant um, metric to watch recession probabilities within six months or so. All right, we're I'd like to just pop in real quick and sure. say, so I don't take up too much time, but you know, you don't, even if the economy slows down, we don't have to have a recession for a slowdown to hurt people, hurt hiring, hurt wages, hurt businesses. So it's something that the Fed wants to avoid. If they have to, I think they'll take steps. All right, good stuff. We're going to leave it there with both of you. Thank you so much. Kathleen Hayes, Global Economics and Policy Editor for Bloomberg. Joining us on the phone in New York City and Yelena Shalachiva, Senior U.S. Economist for Bloomberg Economics, here with us in studio. Coming up, we're going to get into the cover story. Yes, this we week's are. Business Week. It's a good one. Yeah, uh, it has to do with Google, but it's a really interesting, and it's also about their uh, moves to expand into a different uh, line of business uh, and some of their employees. He's not so happy about it, so we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's get to World of National News headlines. Martin DeCaro, he's in our 991 studio in D.C. Hey, Martin. Hello, Jason. The first round of public impeachment hearings ended with testimony from a foreign service professional and a former National Security Council expert on Russia. And as we hear in this live report from Bloomberg's Irv Chapman, they stress their nonpartisan stance on Ukraine. Irv. Martin Fiona Hill, an analyst on Russia, its security services, and its leader, Vladimir Putin, explained why she, as a nonpartisan expert, agreed to join the Trump administration. 
I heard President Trump say that he wanted to improve the relations with Russia. I believe we have to. We can't be in this unending confrontation with Russia. We have to find a way to stabilize that relationship as well as to stop them from doing what they did in 2016 again in 2020. Hill was among the policy advisors who pressed for full-scale support for the Ukrainians in their resistance to Russia, all the more when a new Ukrainian president was elected on the promise of combating well-entrenched corruption. Martin? Thank you, Irv. One of President Trump's key allies is in legal trouble. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will stand trial for bribery, fraud, and breach of trust, indicted on three long-running corruption cases. Bloomberg's Nick Wadhams has the view from Washington. President Trump has essentially for the entire time he's been in office put all his eggs in the Netanyahu basket. He has essentially cast him as the chief interlocutor for everything that happens in the region and certainly with Israel. They are very, very close allies. As Israel remains politically paralyzed, neither Netanyahu nor rival Benny Gantz has been able to form a governing coalition. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Martin DeCaro. 1858, the first transatlantic cable brings news of Europe. We have the U.S. tariffs on European goods. Would you be standing ready to buy U.K. domestic stocks now? Works for three weeks. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. You are expecting an end of uncertainty. It works every time. What are you looking for in the event of a deal? There are a confluence of factors. Weekdays at 1 a.m. Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Bloomberg Business of Sports Podcast. How did the Yankees become this mega valuable team? Where the money is flowing inside sports around the globe. From the marketing perspective, where are the dollars spent? From union heads to team owners, Scott Soshnick and Michael Barr speak to the names that power this multi-billion dollar industry. Boston Red Sox CEO Sam Kennedy. National Hockey League Commissioner Gary Bettman. Bloomberg Business of Sports. Listen today on Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Adopt you. U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting, a Teenager, Learning the Lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. EasyJet fly to a wide range of ski destinations from London. So whether you want to go all out on a classic Alps experience or fancy something a little more low-key, it's smoother than ever and you'll be there, well, you'll be there before you know it. Book now at EasyJet.com. Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. On our watch, in real life, you can feel your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols, and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We heart in real life. Brent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, show us small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small, only by American Express. Christmas is such a magical time of year for little ones. But why should the big kids miss out? This season, take the family to Santa's Wonderland at West London Audi. You get to test drive the latest Audi models and 
the children get to test drive the latest toys with Santa. There's something for the whole family. Visit santaswonderlab.com to find out more about how to register for your place at Santa's Wonderlab this Christmas. It's hard to enjoy your daily yoga routine when your mind is on your next VAT return and how to avoid the usual mistakes. But with QuickBooks, the new VAT smart scan technology does the work for you. As the deadline approaches, it checks for duplicates, looks for anomalies, and reviews VAT codes. So your biggest struggle is touching your forehead with your ankle. Search for QuickBooks. Perfect for making tax digital. QuickBooks. Backing you. College football is live on TV. Listen for free to games from more than 140 schools all season. Long. To the 10, all the way to the checkerboard. Score. Number two, Ohio State looks to clinch the Big Ten Eastern title division outright and a spot in the Big Ten Conference Championship game as they host the ninth-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions in Columbus. This Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern, listen to every call and every game of your school all season long for free on TuneIn. Penn State at Ohio State. Just search college to listen today. At home or on the go, stay up to date on the latest news and political trends with Fox's full lineup of shows. Plus, when news breaks, Fox has you covered with live updates and expert analysis on the biggest developing stories. Listen to Fox News Talk anytime on TuneIn. Start hearing more of what you want. Upgrade to TuneIn Premium and get over 45 commercial-free music stations, live commercial-free news, and every live NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL game. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. From ESPN and the award-winning producers of The Sterling Affairs comes the latest season of 30 for 30 podcasts. Four brand new stories of espionage. He wanted this team to be the Barcelona of women's basketball. Resilience. I started to scream. I tried to get away. Corruption. It's the culture of win at all costs. And rebirth. How will we ever rebuild it? 30 for 30 Podcasts, Season 6. Listen in favorite 30 for 30 podcasts on TuneIn. Don't want to miss a second of your NFL team's next matchup? Let TuneIn remind you. Just make sure notifications are enabled on your phone and search for your team profile on the TuneIn app. Then, find the game you want under events and tap Notify Me. We'll send you an alert as soon as live coverage begins. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. Stocks lower with just about 43 minutes to go ahead of the closing bell. Let's head right over to the first word breaking news desk for today's afternoon call. Here he is, Bill Maloney. And good afternoon, Charlie. That's right. Modest losses for the main U.S. averages right now with the Dow currently down 22 points. S&P's dropped two and NASDAQ falls by 10. Note that FANG stocks are outperforming today and the U.S. 10 yield at 1.77%. Small caps fall five points, but just four of the main 11 SP sectors are trading higher, led by gains in energy and Telecom, real estate led to the downside. NASA Biotech's jumped 10 points. Transports are a little change. Semis sink 1%, and the VIX is higher by 3%. Leaders of the upside in the Dow, ExxonMobil, Pfizer, and Dow, Inc., while Procter & Gamble, Walgreens, and Visa led to the downside. After earnings, Macy's fell 1.8%, and in other news, GE hit a 52-week high, and WeWork bonds fell to a record low. In deal news, Schwab and TD Ameritrade soared on a report Schwab is nearing a deal for the fellow discount broker and wrapping things up some of the names pointing after the bell tonight include intuit nordstrom and splunk live from the first of news desk on bill maloney Charlie. okay i thank you very much bill and to hear live breaking news over your bloomberg time squawk squawk on your terminal i'm charlie pellet and that is a bloomberg business flash yes indeed charlie thank you so much you're listening to bloomberg business week carol masser along with jason kelly right here on bloomberg radio So the cover story in Bloomberg Business Week this week, I have to say, it caught me off guard a little bit in a good way because I thought, okay, Google, kind of what's going on with them, Defense Department, that's kind of interesting, you know, Jedi, all of the negotiations around that. This is a really important and interesting and nuanced story Mm -hmm. because it's about not just Google's ambition, it's about Google as a company at this stage of its development and also some discomfort 
at the very least, and maybe some rebellion, if you take it a step internally, further, right? internally with their employees. Uh, let's talk more about this story. Mark Bergen is tech reporter for Bloomberg. He's in our 960 studio in San Francisco. It's his story. And Mark, I don't mean to talk your story down, but it really was a pleasant surprise in terms of really telling, I think, people stuff they didn't know uh, that was going on. Tell us how you got into this. Well, if you want to go back to, I believe it was March, if you recall, um, General Dunford, who's the uh, second commander of the Pentagon, made these comments at the, uh, and for the Senate, and then he repeated them a week later where he accused Google of, um, in his, his words, indirectly benefiting Chinese military, right? And so Google had um, two things. They were working uh, both on this the search engine for China, and they had an AI lab in China. And then they pulled out of the, um, or they, they, they declined to renew their contract with the Pentagon. Um, and that, and Peter Thiel weighed in, and President yeah. Trump, and, and right, and there was a lot of this that kind of this surface tension between the military and and Google um, came up then, and we were sort of that's that started our investigation, and and what we found is actually you know since in the past year and a half, Google's quietly been really trying its best to get back at the seat of the table with, with the military. Um, we saw that pretty vividly earlier this month where there was this uh, big committee on AI and you have uh, General Shanahan seated in between um, Eric Schmidt, who's Google's former CEO, and Kent Walker, who is top legal and, and policy chief, basically saying, we're here, we're ready to work with you. I love the line in your story. Uh, there was a time when Google might have worn its unpopularity in Washington as a badge of honor. The company is hitting middle age now and with $140 billion in annual revenue and a desire to expand into new lines of business. I mean, it's right. It's a different Google from when it first started. It, you know, one of the we, we talked to someone, um, a defense official. One of the first things they said to us is, "Is Google's moving from a consumer company to an enterprise company?" Mm-hmm. Um, and that's partially true. You know, their their cloud business is where they're they're putting a lot of resources, where they're hoping to catch up with Amazon, and Microsoft. Um, but that's where also a lot of contention they have internally. You know, you've, they've been hiring for with two decades employees that came in with this, um, you know, do no evil yeah. slogan. Right? They're building consumer. They're talking about building the best products for consumers uh, and now recently they're they're it's becoming like the, the cloud and the enterprise business is becoming much more central to the company's focus. So let's talk about that because I think that is at the core of this story and really makes it a must read mark, which is this idea of, and I use this term probably too much on the show, this is an existential crisis inside one of the sort of biggest, most important companies out there. And at a time when the public has big questions about the role of tech. You go inside this company and people at Google, a place where you know people would have given, as they say, their eye teeth to work, are mm-hmm. thinking, huh, maybe this isn't the place I thought it was. Yeah, you know, in the past year after Maven, Google's come out with these um, AI principles, right? That sort of that's their guideline. We've seen Microsoft talk about this a lot, then and, and the military actually now has their own AI principles. And so you can make the argument that this this re- internal rebellion at Google kind of kicked off this broader conversation about um, about AI and ethics. And I think in the backdrop here, you certainly have the national security and military um, establishments in DC very concerned about China. Uh, and lead in AI. Um, and, and Google has, you know, Microsoft and Amazon have pretty clearly their leadership. Um, you've seen a, some resistance from their, their employees, but their leadership have been pretty steadfast in this. We are, you know, both putting on Jedi. Um, we are both, we're, you know, Amazon is now even trying to, to contend to, to get back in the Jedi, right, and, and working with the CIA, um, whereas Google has, in a lot of its public statements, has been a little um, squishy on that. But it is interesting, too, um, that you do have different companies, right, uh, mm-hmm. big tech companies that are already working with the government, right, on big con- contracts, but it's, it's, everybody's looked at under a different lens, Microsoft versus Google, right? And it's, or Facebook, like everybody's looked at differently. Yeah, I mean, Google's, I mean, part of it is that the, the other issue that Google's known for, right, like that it's, it's still a, um, it's still a search advertising company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and in D.C. right now, they're, they're pushing back on this idea the, from the, the right that they're, that they have anti-conservative bias. And then from the left, you know, all these charts, right, the, the antitrust yeah. investigation, privacy, data, security, the, the list is sort of endless. Uh, and those are fights that Microsoft and Amazon, to a lesser extent, are not having. 
Right. Well, it's a terrific story. It's the cover. I have to say, even the cover itself is yeah. really arresting because you get this sense of the context and the scope, really, of what we're talking about here. Terrific story. Mark Bergen, tech reporter for Bloomberg, author of the cover in this week's Bloomberg Business Week, Google at War, Employees in Rebellion Over Military Contracts. It's available on the Bloomberg Terminal and through Bloomberg.com right now. Also on the Bloomberg Terminal, interesting story about the debates last night and one candidate in particular standing out on when it Street. comes to Wall Street. Yeah. Exactly. So we're going to dig into that story in just a moment. Still got about 35 minutes left in today's trading session, so we'll count you down at the closing bell as well. Carol Masser, Jason Kelly, Bloomberg and this is Bloomberg Radio. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Stocks remain narrowly lower in the final hour. Conflicting signs on the outlook for a U.S.-China trade deal have left investors with little reason to buy or sell. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 16. The S&P 500 is down 2 points. The Nasdaq Composite down 10. Xerox isn't taking no for an answer in its pursuit of HP. It has given HP until Monday to open its books, or it says it will launch a hostile takeover bid. HP rejected Xerox's offer, citing doubts about Xerox's prospects in the printing industry. Microsoft Surface earbuds will miss the 2019 holiday season as Microsoft becomes the latest company to stumble in the race to catch up with Apple's popular AirPods. Bumblebee Foods has filed for bankruptcy. The filing was expected after North America's largest producer of packaged seafood pleaded guilty in a price-fixing case. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if you could keep the top economic experts in a conference room next to your office without having to feed them? Do we need better optics? Do we need some substance? Do CEOs care about ESG? We have seen quite a lot of stimulus pumped into the system. It's the biggest warning yet about the financial risks of climate change. Now, there are more ways to hear us. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com and iHeartRadio apps, and at BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Far wing elevates triple bucket. The war of the crowd. The shot clock ticks down. Will the ball go in? The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. And the replays just don't cut. To the sideline, the man fleet for three. Tune in Premium brings you every minute of the NBA season streaming live, so you can be there when it matters most. Hear it now. Hear it live on two. Making the lane, turn around, jumper from eight feet is good on Search the NBA today to start listening. Upgrade to TuneIn Premium and get over 45 commercial-free music stations. You'll also get live commercial-free news, plus live play-by-play games from NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. Introducing a podcast, ESPN Daily. When you want to go beyond your feed, 
When you want to get inside the score, when you want to get behind the highlight, there's ESPN Daily. Go deeper into the stories of the moment. Get the exclusive access and insider perspective that only ESPN can give you. ESPN Daily. Hosted by me, Mina Kimes. Listen now to ESPN Daily on TuneIn. Cutting for the net, scores! On the goal line, Marshawn scores! Hockey fans, the 2019-20 NHL season is here. And it tucks it home! And with this team, it's it's really fun to be a part of a team like that. And you can hear the action live on TuneIn. From regular season action to the All-Star Game and through the Stanley Cup in June. Hear the home and away call for every game for every team live. At home or on the go, never miss a game with the NHL on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. You're listening to TuneIn, where you can hear all the audio you love in one place. Live NFL games, the hottest music, breaking news, and podcasts. Push and go about your day only on TuneIn. College football is live on TuneIn. Listen for free to games from more than 140 schools all season long. To the 10, all the way to the checkerboard. To the the on his feet and score. Number two, Ohio State looks to clinch the Big Ten Eastern title division outright and a spot in the Big Ten Conference Championship game as they host the ninth-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions in Columbus. This Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern, listen to every call and every game of your school all season long for free on TuneIn. Penn State at Ohio State. Just search college to listen today from espn and the award-winning producers of the sterling affairs comes the latest season of 30 for 30 podcasts four brand new stories of espionage he wanted this team to be the barcelona of women's basketball resilience i started to scream i tried to get away corruption it's the culture of win at all costs and rebirth how we ever rebuild it 30 for 30 podcasts season six listen now to 30 for 30 podcasts on tune in when you're not listening to your team take it to the end zone the rim or the net keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following tune in on social media block, 